ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the awesome cast number 102. Let's point the mic at my mouth. Uh, we are here once again uh, from the studios in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm uh, your your host, uh, your your button pusher, you, the guy behind the deck, uh, Mike Sork. Where am I? There I am. And with me on the couch, as usual, is Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com. I, I was just sitting there with my tongue out, and you completely switched me, and I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> great introduction. So also, there is a great shot for you. There you go. Also with us, Rob De La Creta. Whoop, oh, where's it at? There it is. There, he is. there it is. There I am. Uh, I'm on the internet. Yay. 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 <laughs> and also join us for the first time since last year. Technically, he was on he was on the, the Christmas episode. I was. He's a news guy, uh, uh, weekend anchor at an undisclosed Boston station. Jim Loke joins us again. I like being a man of mystery. That is wicked awesome. Wicked awesome. <laughs> Jim, cool. right, right off the bat, I have to ask you, uh, I, I, we've been seeing your tweets over uh -huh. the last few days. The that, saga. The saga of, uh, <laughs> of uh, I think I said that like a Bostoner too, um, of your iPad that you left here in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I uh, I left my iPad in, uh, I, you know, I've been going back and forth to Pittsburgh quite a bit, and I had my iPad with me, and I left it in my, uh, uh, I'm home, it's like I'm seven again, I'm, or, well, not seven, maybe 17, I'm borrowing my mom's car. So I left my iPad in the car, and uh, I was at the airport on Friday, and I'm checking in, and I'm like, my backpack's really light, and I realized just then, crap i didn't put the ipad in so uh, I, I call my mom up i go listen my ipad's in the bag she goes well i'll send it so i uh, <laughs> i told her you know, go to the postal service drop it in the priority mailbox wrap it up in newspaper get insurance on it and send it so she did realize that i didn't turn the gp i di didn't ever turn it off so the gps tracking was on the entire way so i was following it on sunday morning as it made its way across i-80 and up into new york and into connecticut <laughs> um, Last night, it ended up in a postal service. Uh, po uh, Sunday night, it was in a postal sorting facility in Boston. Yesterday, it ended up in Nashua, New Hampshire. So I'm like, well, it's going the wrong way. Uh, Nashua was about 45, 50 minutes north of where I am. So uh, uh, they, they had it on the truck today. It was ready to be delivered. And I wasn't here. So it is now. <laughs> it's still at the post office, but it's here in town. So I'm gonna go get it today. Uh, get it tomorrow. But uh, it's it's uh, yeah, it's been a little weird not having not having the iPad around. And that's that's definitely like not what they thought of when they added that feature. <laughs> well, <laughs> I bet. Yes, it is. You think it is? Like yes. Steve Jobs is. I want to see what the post. Steve was. and the boys are sitting around the table, and Steve's like, "All right, we're gonna put in this new software feature, where, so people can uh, track their eye devices." Yeah, and he's like, and it's gonna be for when people forget them someplace and have them shipped back. Wouldn't it be awesome <laughs> if you, when you uh, purchased an iPad on the Apple website, they gave you like the login information for the? <laughs> so you that could actually track it. Tremendous. Way. Yeah, so you could track it. It'd be like track your brand new iPad as it comes yeah. to your door. You know, it's fun enough just watching the tracking information to see it come from like Shanghai to Hong Kong right. to to somewhere in California. You yeah. know. Well, I, I will say this. I, I, you know, I'm glad that it wasn't shipped by airmail because I'm, I would have violated FAA regulations by having <laughs> a, an electronic device on. But you know, on on Friday, I have I have I have my own phone, and then I have a phone for work that I that I had with me, and I thought that I tossed it in my in my suitcase, but actually it was in my carry on, and it was on the entire time. So, uh, so I, I was violating international flight law anyway. But uh, yeah, uh, that's something obviously frown frown upon. But uh, you know, Steve Jobs be damned. I'm getting my iPad tomorrow. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's it, it, it's like it's like unboxing day yet again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, we got some other feedback. Uh, you guys uh, can drop us emails and such. We're at awesomecast.com. Contact at awesomecast.com or uh, tweet us at awesomecast. Uh, we also have a page like us over on Facebook. We're on Google Plus. If you're circled, we circle you back and you can hop in and make funny faces behind us on the Google Hangout behind me on the video side of things. Um, so, uh, AJ, often contributor and uh, been on the show quite a few times in the past, he dropped us an email. Um, in, I think it was response to some stuff we were talking about last week. 
Uh, he says, I've got things to say. Uh, first, this whole <laughs> business with Comcast involves nothing along the lines of net neutrality. I believe we were talking about the uh, the Xfinity app on on Xbox last week, uh, and everything to do with providing service to you while keeping the strain off their outside pipes. Say what you wanted to say. Say you wanted to watch a movie and you had the choice between using Netflix or watching off the network attached storage in your home. Uh, which one would you pick? You would likely pick the locally stored one, and that's what Comcast is doing. Their content that they're providing via the Xfinity TV app and to your DVR via an on-demand is uh, stored locally inside their network, meaning they're providing the content to you locally. Uh, you are, in essence, an endpoint on their customer number, which is all internal, so that does nothing with the outside pipes. They're not degrading the traffic. They're not throttling anything. Uh, they're doing this because it doesn't matter to them uh, from a bandwidth standpoint. Netflix and Hulu and various other video streaming services do. Uh, the term you're looking for here is called quality of service air quotes there uh and it's used to uh it's used and it's used in many many large networks to make sure that the stuff doesn't get out of hand or go over other traffic comcast is already doing this with voice traffic do you ever notice how if you have a Com comcast phone service and plug it into the cable modem that's because it's voice over ip traffic comcast throttles your internet traffic if needed uh to make sure that your voice traffic stays nice and clear uh for the other person you to hear you. Uh, does this have a potential to get bad quickly? Yes. Yes, it does. However, at this point, I don't believe there's one and thus everybody uh, needs to calm down. You know, this also made me think about because I, uh, I had an issue early on with my Fios and to realize we were watching a lot of on demand, like we were watching like Dexter or something through the on demand, we, you know, because we got bundled Showtime or something. And um, and they talk and, and something went down, uh, but it was weird because we would be watching Dexter and it's like the plug got pulled on like watching a Netflix movie. And they explained. So basically what they're doing is every all the TV you have coming in there, including the on demand service, they have that bandwidth fat pipe and they have it split off. Like this section is, is like their on demand bandwidth. And this <laughs> section is what you pay for, for your Fios like internet. So I guess they're doing something similar with that. Well, I mean, I know we're seeing at least uh, you, you have Comcast doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, and I got to tell you, you know, I've, I had Fios in Pittsburgh. I have Comcast in, in, in the apartment here. And I'm actually, I, I got to tell you, I actually think, I think uh, the Comcast service here is, is, is faster and a little more reliable than what I've had with Fios. Mm -hmm. That being said, I, you know, you, you see a lot of companies trying to find these alternate ways to, 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 to provide bandwidth. I mean, that's one of the reasons, obviously, AT&T, his, uh, is 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 kind of opening up um, hot Wi-Fi hotspots in a lot of cities. You know, for those of us who have iPhones who just weigh down on that network so heavily. Mm -hmm. So they're giving us those alternate ways. Uh, but but I think the damage has been done from companies like Comcast, where you know so much negative publicity has come out. No matter what, no matter what we do as consumers on our end, um, you know, I think I think I think the way that these companies fought net neutrality, I think that. Uh, um, They've sort of, they've sort of already. They can do whatever they want at this point. I think that we're always going to think in the back of our heads they're they're, they're doing something to our service. Exactly, exactly. Um, and and he's got a point there about the you know in network. I, I guess it is the stuff going out that they have to worry about more. Um, because really, I mean that that stuff you're getting Xfinity is the same stuff you're getting on the box. I guess it's taxed the same servers, but I don't. I, I think it's just thought of differently because it is going to something like an Xbox. Like, uh, do they count the bandwidth on if you're using the website? Does anybody know? Because Xfinity goes through the website too, right, Josh? What? I, uh, the Xfinity, <laughs> the, I don't know. the Xfinity uh, uh, service goes over the website too. Like they have like a Hulu type service along with that. Yeah. Do we know if the, that that affects the bandwidth? Do they count that against you? I, not I'm sure I they know. do. Yeah, they probably at that point. I mean, <clears throat> I mean that's that's being served a different way. It's being served over, you know, whatever HTTPS or whatever. I mean, that's a to bring this whole thing back to what we were saying last week. If they, in the scenario in which Xfinity is available and doesn't count against your bandwidth cap, that would be a violation of net neutrality. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I'll be interesting to see how it goes and uh, see if they step over the line there. Um, he also sent us, uh, he's of course, uh, has to deal with Time Warner, 
uh, cable down there. Oh God. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't think he'd been too happy with it from his twitters uh, that I recall. Uh, but he did uh, send this uh, picture last night because uh, uh, thanks to Time Warner and the iPad app, he can watch Raw on his iPad. Legitimate. Well, I know. I know that that app. I is actually. I'm coming to you as somebody who worked for Time Warner um, mm-hmm. from uh, 2003 to 2005. The station that I worked for was, was part of the whole Time Warner empire. Um, I can tell you that if you do have that app, it, it, it sounds all well and good, but you can only do that in your house. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's 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 nice, but you know, I have a sling box, and 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 I can do that in my apartment. I can do that really anywhere. Yeah. So. Um, but I think Time Warner is a company. Just they 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 don't, they don't know where their what their future is, and I, I'm not a big fan. I think if I if my facial expression to make that clear. I think I feel like the cable has has split off from the whole Time Warner empire. It did okay? It did. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. and I know it's been an issue because like when they first put out this app, it didn't have all the channels that you're obviously already paying for because they hadn't struck so many deals. Uh, I heard I heard. Uh, um, uh, you know, people, it didn't work half the time for the first first while. I think they disabled it after a couple of days because something went wrong with it Yeah. Uh, when they first released it. So interesting idea. It, it's another screen, um, you know, that you don't have to have a box for, you know. So that, that's well, got to be kind of nice. And there's actually a service. And this thing that just uh, reached, um, it, 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 there was a little ruling that came out about it today that, that is kind of preserving it. But uh, something called Aereo, A-E-R-E-O. And it's a service that uh, mm-hmm. they pulled out in New York City. Barry Diller, who was behind USA Networks and a bunch of other QBC. Uh, basically, what, what the service is, is they're streaming broadcast TV stations over the Internet onto, onto mobile devices, on your computer, or wherever you want. So basically, the, the whole gist there is to get you to catch your cable TV service and to subscribe to Aereo. Broadcasters don't like it for obvious reasons because they're not really controlling it, controlling it at that point. But um, there, there's a few companies out there providing a service like that, or at least trying to. So DivX, I worked at Circuit City from 97 to 2000, and this is when DVD was really just rolling out. And this, the company was so hell-bent on pushing this DivX technology, they thought DivX was going to blow DVDs out of the water. Yeah. But the tr- truth of the matter is you were still paying $100 more for a, for a DivX-enabled player. You'd pay $5 for a disc that it would expire two days after playing it, or you can convert it to DivX Gold, which was like 20 bucks. And it was just so convoluted that, um, you know, I, I don't think there was really any redeeming thing that came out of that experiment other than the fact that Circuit City, that's what did them in. That's why there's no longer Circuit Cities. Hey, is that really, uh, <laughs> I feel like there's a relation there between that and now I'm starting to see the commercials from Walmart for the ultraviolet conversions. <laughs> like, I, I, I just think they, I think that it's, it, you know, I, I think that simplicity is, is the key to making anything wide, you know, widespread and mainstream. I mean, I think that's why VHS beat out beta, even though beta was a superior format. Um, I, I think that you can have all these companies make all these investments, but I think that what, what we want as consumers in the end is to have a device that we can pick up something, turn it on and get what we want rather than having to go through all these steps of setting up the credit card, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, something else that Comcast is doing here, uh, as reported by over on Mashable here. Um, so apparently they're finally raising their caps and they're testing this in certain markets. Now, I also saw, uh, you know, this one, of course, is, is talking about uh, raising it to a, 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 a 300 gigabyte or yeah, gigabyte cap. Um, word is that some areas are going to be getting like a unlimited cap uh, and it's just going to be test markets. Uh, or some of the stuff, some services are testing, and I think they were just opening up unlimited to see how they worked. Um, so, uh, and 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 I, I put out uh, earlier this week trying to see has anybody hit this cap, and I did find one person finally after all this time that did hit that. Uh, but a lot of people are saying they're running Netflix, they're running Hulu, and they're not coming anywhere near. So, um, so why now? I guess is the question. Well, I feel like this whole time it's been a <coughs> – the question has been what's going to 
uh, what's going to win first, the ability to compress media or the size that media needs to be to deliver the quality of content that people are now asking for? Mm -hmm. So you consider what, you know, if you are familiar with the concept of downloading movies, movies have always been 700 megabytes on the intertubes, mostly because 700 megabytes is the happy compression medium for what it took to burn it to a CD. And then once... Um, DVD burners became prevalent. You started to see every once in a while, you would see something that was between 3 and 4.8 uh, gigabytes, which is a single-sided DVD. And then Blu-ray comes out, and now the size, you can, you can go all the way up to 9 gigs or, or something ungodly if you want to, um, because people are starting to push that big of a file. Uh, what we saw back in like the 90s, I think, like when people were first pushing audio, remember the wave format, the wave mm -hmm. wasn't like really that compressed. So it made, it meant for huge files. And then MP3 came out and suddenly every MP3 is about three megabytes. So we went from pushing huge files to pushing smaller files. And it stuck to, still took me an hour to download it. Right. Um, and so what we're stuck with right now is that there hasn't been any huge evolutions in compressing file data. Um, we have been using the same compression algorithms, give or take, for a really long time. I mean, like, so new image formats, you're talking about, like, the red format, and H.264 in its latest iteration is pretty new, but they're not any smaller than anything before it. Mm -hmm. So it seems like technology is pushing that files are not going to get any smaller, and we need to allow more bandwidth. So Comcast eventually is put in this awkward situation where it's like, either you can stifle your users and starve them from data, or you can give in and just increase your cap. And they're stating in this article, uh, Comcast is stating this, that users are not meeting this cap yet. Uh, but it feels like it is kind of a, a stopgap. And they're going to start offering, like, you know, upgrades for $10 for 55 gigs more uh, of available bandwidth, etc. So it seems like a preparation for when people do start using mass amounts. I mean, you start getting a, a, a family of four that's all, you know, watching Hulu and Netflix on their laptops independently, you're going to start seeing that cap, I think, hit, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, certainly, because we're all, everything is pushing more towards streaming content, streaming media. It's mm -hmm. all about, <coughs> as, um, you know, as we move forward, the inevitable, like, end game of all of this is that the actual memory on your device will be extremely small, and all of your stuff is stored remotely in some form or fashion. I mean, we're all sort of afraid of the cloud and the idea of, like, you know, if I lose my internet, I can't watch my videos or whatever. Right. But this is the way things are going. Like iCloud, Netflix, Hulu. This is how oh, you get your content, and that, that's not going to change. That's no different from when I had DirecTV and a big cloud went by. Then I lost my stream of content there, too. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. And, and, Rob, that's a good point because I, I went out a while ago, like, back in, um, there we go again, back in October, uh, I went out to buy a new MacBook, and, and they were trying to sell me on a, a MacBook Air. And, and as much as I like the idea and the simplicity of that, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I still have a ton of media on this. I do a lot of video editing. I have a lot of sound, a, a, lot, a lot of uh, a lot of music on here, mm -hmm. and I'm just not ready to give it up and put it in somewhere that may not be always accessible. Now I'm lucky. I I, I have an iPad and iPhone, and I was I was I was I'm grandfathered in under the unlimited data plans. But even last month, I got the text from AT&T saying, you hit three gig, mm -hmm. do it again, we're going to start curbing your limits. Yeah, uh, Missy's been hit, getting those uh, texts as well uh, since they dropped that. They, they pretty much dropped the Unlimited without saying they dropped it. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's horrible. Uh, Verizon, we got a story in here too. Verizon's killing their right. Unlimited plans. Uh, but they're doing it in a different kind of way. Uh, they, they're saying that they're, if you upgrade to a 4G plan, uh, it, it's, it's going to be gone. So that one you got with, like, say, your iPad or, or right. wherever else they were uh, offering that in, in limited quantities, um, yeah, it, they're, they're going to they're gonna get you out of it. So how many people are going to be holding on to their 3G devices on Verizon for as long as they possibly can? Well, that's the same thing with, with the, the, uh, the, the new iPad and, and those 4G plans. It's the same deal with AT&T or Verizon. You know, I, I, again, I'm grandfathered in under unlimited 3G. i I got to be honest with you. I love seeing. I love the new iPad, um, but I'm not really in any hurry to give up having unlimited 3G. It's it's great to have, mm -hmm. and I really don't see much of a difference at this point. You know, maybe down the road I'll, I'll reconsider that. But um, I, I was talking to somebody at AT&T just last week, and 
you know, the amazing thing is one of the reasons Verizon's being forced to do this is they made such a big deal about how AT&T's network is weighed down when, when, when AT&T got the iPhone initially. Um, Verizon's network has suffered quite a bit as well. Like to the extent in like in, in the same areas, do you think, like San Francisco and New York? Oh, I, 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 I don't know if any of you or, or just have broader. an iPhone on Verizon. I do. Chachi does. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. wait, wait. You have an iPhone now? Yeah, it's uh, my firm iPhone. Oh. It's not personal, no. <laughs> I have both. I mean, for a good while in Boston, I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, right around the time that, that the new the, the new iOS came out, and they they, they changed the the network indicator, so my my iPhone four now says I'm on four G, which you know, by AT and T's terminology, I also noticed the system around here in Boston just really really went to hell. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was actually downtown today, and this is the first time in Pittsburgh where I was sitting there and had full four bars, and it was around noon, so presumably everybody's going to lunch, and uh, I started trying to, you know, I flipped to my next podcast while I was waiting for my uh, my lunch date with Munns, and, uh, it, and it just would not cough it up, and I noticed everything else stopped working, and, and the only other place I've experienced that was, like, New York City. Well, I think... <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. Internet. It's a unique New York. <laughs> um, uh, if you if you poke around on the on the Twitters and the Facebooks, you'll see that in the last week or so, everyone, and I do mean literally everyone with an iPhone on AT and T, has been asking the question: Is your service suck lately, or is it just me? So I'm fairly certain because there was a software update that rolled out about a week and a half ago, which I have not. I think. I have not done I, that yet. I, I think I, they broke something in the network when they rolled out that update. Interesting. So it, it's not bearing on whether you updated or not because I have not done that. I just haven't no, taken the time so. to sync up my device. It um, seems the entire network took some sort of weird hit. And it's only if you are if you are in tune with where you do and do not have service or if you're in an area where you were on the edge of having service and you, you don't have any service. So like for me, I have really good service pretty much everywhere in Pittsburgh except for certain portions of my studio just because it's a big building, like a big solid concrete brick building. Yeah. And now I'll like I'll leave the studio and then I'll get a text message from somebody saying like, hey, I tried to call you five times. Why did you pick up? And my phone didn't do anything. And I've talked to a few people who are like, I don't know what the deal is, but the last few days my phone doesn't work at all. So I'm really hoping they fix whatever this is. Yeah. And, you know, and I've noticed uh, over the past several months, I'll be riding through the middle of town and notice my phone drop the edge. Mm. Like on the yeah, highway, places that normally like wouldn't. Time. What's that? I'm suddenly on edge. Like all, I used to never see edge unless I went to like New Jersey. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it, it's like in the middle of the city where I know a shouldn't be dropping to that. Um, so and it seemed like it was after the last, not this, like two updates ago that I started started seeing it. But um, and it's noticeable because I'd be sitting there, you know, listening to Pandora or something, you know, on on my commute home, and uh, you know, be about to hit the Larry Tunnel, and it's edge, and I'm getting buzzes uh, because I don't have a shielded cable uh, for my radio and stuff. So I don't know. So I don't have problems. Chachi doesn't have problems. He he has. Bro, I until until you go until you go to West Virginia and your phone well, no, doesn't that's work. All, that's on my T-Mobile. <laughs> I'm not talking about my T-Mobile. Yeah. Because my T-Mobile will stop working as soon as we leave the city limits. Exactly. That's that's not that's not a, a made for a service made for no. out in the boondocks uh, wrestling shows. Uh, so, Chachi, this is one you might be interested in. Uh, nope. I found this past week. Yes, it is. It's got Kevin Smith on. It. So there you go. Um, Kevin Smith, uh, Hulu to watch a new show with Kevin Smith plus nine other titles. Uh, so it, despite popular belief, there are some things that involve Kevin Smith that I don't watch. He has a lot of stuff right now. I know. <laughs> He's got an incredible amount of stuff right now. Yeah, yeah. He, he just uh, went over and started his uh, a YouTube channel. I haven't watched too much of that yet. Um, but, you know, and I, I listened to a recent interview on, um, on Nerdist uh, that he did talking about how this has become kind of a platform podcasting he's referring to uh, with his smodcast network has become kind of the place to like test out stuff. And that like, that's how stuff like comic book men 
came from because those guys did uh, a, a podcast on there for I think even before Smodcast was a thing, um, which is his main show for those that don't follow Kevin Smith. Um, so I, this seems like another step in that direction. According to this article, um, the half hour show is going to be devoted to discussions of movies that launch on Hulu and Hulu Plus on June 4th, um, which really kind of sounds like uh, Hollywood Babylon. Uh, I've only listened to that a couple times, but it, it seems like a similar concept. Um, so this seems like a, a, a kind of a new talent initiative, kind of like what YouTube did um, in the recent past with the Felicia days and the and the Shaquille O'Neal's. I haven't even seen any of Shaq's stuff. Um, so what do you what do you think of this? Uh, you know, guys like that get involved with with Hulu more directly. Jim, we talked. Well, I think it's. I mean, I think it's a good thing that it, at least it gives it some credibility. Um, not saying it didn't have credibility before. I mean, I think the, obviously you can make the argument that you know the popularity of Hulu was out there already. Um, the question remains: How many people out there are still going to want to sit? You know, I, I mean, obviously there's a lot more ways to connect Hulu Plus to your TV right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I, I checked out that, that uh, Morgan Spurlock has a, a Day in the Life series on Netflix. Or no, that isn't Hulu. And I checked it out a couple of times, but I mean, I think you really have to like the subject. And, you I, I, you know, it's not like you have the luxury of flipping through and saying, oh, maybe I'll sit around and watch that. You have to go. It's a destination. So if you're a Kevin Smith fan, we know there's a lot out there. You know, I think you can depend on them to, to, to check it out. But beyond that, um, you know, I, I think it's gaining some acceptance. I think what's really going to be the true test of how this, this exclusive content to Hulu and Netflix, how much it's going to really translate is when Arrested Development goes to Netflix, which mm -hmm. was it this year or next year. They're doing 10, 10 episodes leading up to the movie. And, you know, it's, it has such a cult following. I think that once you see people flocking to get Roku boxes or whether they're going to use their Apple TVs or, or you know, pull it up on Xbox, um, I think that's really going to be the true indicator of how, how well this will translate. And you know when that happens, everybody that has an Xbox, we talked a little bit about how that became the, kind of the top uh, video player last week. Everybody that has an Xbox, when they boot it up, the first thing they're going to see, Arrested Devel Development's back. Yeah. And how many people are going to say, oh, really? I didn't know that was coming back because, you know, people aren't reading these stories like we do. Right. Um, how, do I, how do I find it? And it's going to follow them right through and they got Hulu Plus. Uh, or, I'm sorry, Netflix. Um, that's it, it, It's weird. They're dumping that into... They're dumping that all all at one time. I understand. It's yeah, all, all, all ten ep ten episodes at once, which I, I that's an interesting uh, interesting way to do it. But then again, I, I think I think that if it, if it's a success, you know, I think then then that bodes well. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Sonic's in the chat room. Uh, uh, talking about this, as Smith was talking about specially audience content and how today's market is open for it. I mean, you know, look at what he's doing with his movies. He's going in and, and doing showing the movie and having QAs, you know, instead of having yeah. a first theater run, you know, doing on demand, which you're seeing a lot. Uh, the uh, the Comic Con movie uh, that came out recently from Morgan Spurlock uh, came out on demand only, limited release uh, kind of kind of situation. Um, he also, uh, Sonic's also in there saying, as long as Hulu realizes the uh, hands off is what makes the content creative and fresh, he says. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, these, it just seems like another option because, uh, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, um, I know that with the recent uh, Discovery purchasing Revision 3, uh, Brian Brusher was talking about stuff that he's pitched. I think Scam School was originally a pitch for, uh, Discovery Channel, uh, but usually it's a concept like that, and they want it bigger. So maybe this is something where these kind of middle road projects that don't need the big TV budget can live. Yeah. And also, oh, sorry, I didn't turn you up there. <laughs> wow, and you wonder why I'm not. Oh, you're all knocking your mic around <laughs> and everything, you know. It, it also depends on uh, how much Hulu and Netflix uh, pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. Because um, I mean, if like Sonic said, if if they try to uh, control these shows in any way, shape, or form, then they're gonna fail. Yeah. Because I know, uh, uh, using Kevin Smith as an example again, if Hulu sits there and tries to tell him what he can or cannot do, he's not gonna stick around very long. Yeah. Sure. 
So yeah, yeah. he has enough options, and he, and he's creating his own network on his end to push yeah. more stuff like that. At so. the same time, if this, I mean, we've been looking for something like this to set a precedent of sorts for a while because the problem that we currently have is say that, you know, you as a content producer want to put something on TV. Well, that's cool. As a producer, you now need to find a publisher. And as a publisher, you now have to find a network. So now you have two separate people to answer to. So say like, you know, you go to, you make a show. So you go to Fox. Mm-hmm. Fox eventually has to go to Comcast and say, hey, we want you to have our channel. And then Comcast says, okay, that's cool. What's on your channel? And then there's so many questions and so many negotiations involved, as well as money being passed back and forth as just sort of a means of, of acceptance, that the content producer loses out on a lot of freedom, as well as a lot of potential flooding, funding to make you know, more content. Um, so when guys like Kevin Smith <clears throat> are able to go directly to what is essentially the Comcast of the internet as far, as far as like sharing content by taking it up to Hulu, which is like the equivalent of a broadcast channel. Um, it takes the middleman out of it and then you can, you're able to succeed as a content producer. Mm-hmm. So instead of, you know, it's sort of like, just like going up on YouTube, but in a much more, uh, packaged element. Yeah, and you're gonna see. Yeah, you're gonna see more of these guys are fed up with whatever they dealt with on the networks or or the studios going this way. Uh, Juggalo John in the chat uh, mentions that uh, Dave Chappelle, uh, who hasn't done a show in man, how many years did he do Chappelle show? I don't think he's done anything so, since. Oh three, oh four, oh three, no, oh five, oh five. Oh five. Um, he said he was planning to make a, either a Hulu or Netflix only content, at least, or at least he was in talks. Um, and Sonic goes on. He says, yeah, creating content should be treated like a, a marriage with the networks. Uh, don't try and change the one you fell in love with. Interesting. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, so. and Rob, you mentioned about uh, that, that whole dichotomy about, you know, about uh, Fox going to Comcast or something along those lines. Well, look, you know, Comcast owns NBC now. And and what NBC and Fox are partners in Hulu. And, and so everybody seems to... At least, at least from the perspective of NBC and Comcast, they're pretty much one-stop shopping now. Yeah. So, you know, they cut they they cut out the middleman even more, and and I think I don't think that's a good thing for people who, you know, want to be creative out there and who want to try, you know, who want to go out on a limb. So I think that it's it's kind of a dangerous path we're seeing with with these um, content providers um, m- joining forces and merging with the content creators. If you want to call anything that. NBC does creative. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I had a, I, it is a random thought we had earlier when we first talked about Hulu in this in the show. Um, at what point, with all this, with all this new content coming to it, uh, when when does this uh, start getting shopped in as a new content channel on, say, Xfinity? I think it would take way you- too much money. I, would it take too much money or is it just like, hey, here's all of our exclusive content and it's like a tier that you could offer just like or it's something that gets rolled in along with a side because the more more than anything, Hulu wants to play nice with they don't want to bite the hand that feeds them. So they don't want to make the uh, cable operators angry. They want to don't want to make the stations that have this relationship with the cable operators angry. At what point does your seven ninety nine a month also gets you? you know, that button on your on your on demand with certain providers. I mean, I can really see that happening. I, I, I kind of like the idea of it being separated and in a separate, uh, uh, you know, source of that kind of content for me as a cord cutter. But I, I, I can just I see that marriage kind of happening, especially if they keep getting stuff like, you know, a Kevin Smith property like this, Morgan Spurlock stuff, uh, you know, they, keep, they keep pushing shows to shows to that from like Canada and the BBC that we don't get here. Kevin Smith's content is not something that is making the cable providers jump up out of their chairs to get this, <laughs> get Hulu on their But it's, an, it's just like putting an anime TV button in there in the long run. No, it's not. It isn't? No. See, Kevin Smith is staying away from the major providers for a reason. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to play their games. Mm-hmm. So he's not going to do anything to make it easier for them to get his their hands on his product. Okay. Look at it, what he did with Red State. He got fed up with playing their games and wanting the, or them wanting to change so much about the, pro, the, the project he was working on mm-hmm. that he up and left all of that. 
Yeah, I mean, basically, I mean, what happened with Kevin Smith is that after he produced Jersey Girl, he got completely burned out by the entire system um, and where the money was going and how the money is basically being like, you know, 90% siphoned away from the creative individuals responsible for putting the thing together. <laughs> so ever since then, which is why he's he founded Smodcast, it's why he's been doing everything in-house because he is really tired of having basically the life sucked out of him. So... I don't know. I mean, him moving to Hulu and or doing the the thing is is uh. Cat just knocks something over. Um, <laughs> and also, think, I was watching it happen. And also, think most of his specials. Uh, I think we talked about it, are on Epix, which gets funneled online and to mm-hmm. Netflix. That's how we yeah, watch them, yeah. right? But that contract's expiring soon. Is it? Yeah. Well, uh, the, uh, wait. The Epix contract. The Epix and Netflix contract is at least the ex- exclusivity clause is expiring soon. Okay, okay. I, if anything, I could see this Hulu deal actually working out pretty well for Kevin Smith, it, because uh, he stated over and over again that he has uh, one more movie that he's making, and then he's done. Yeah, and it's actually a two-part movie. It's part one and part two. He's announced. Oh, I, I didn't so, know that. if anything, his deal with Hulu gives him an easier place to release this movie, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which in turn would help Hulu because I mean, all Hulu has to do is be like seven ninety nine a month, and what's up? You got this movie? <laughs> yeah. How, how well, you doing? Yeah, pretty you know? much. So and that's I mean, basically where his movies end up is like straight on to say Netflix after just a couple months. Um, as you usually see with the straight to, uh, DVD release, like we see them with the WWE movies, I know, uh, lately. Um, still waiting for that Edge movie, though. So I want to touch on this one uh, uh, item I found here. Um, so, Chachi, you, you're, you're a Connect, Connect guy. Now. No, I'm not. How, how, I it, have it's, a Connect. It's staring at you. you it watches you, me sleep. You play uh, Dance Dance uh, Han Solo every night. No, I, <laughs> I still haven't played that. How does that not? You moved your your room around and everything. Well, no, I played I played I Star Wars Connect. Yes, but I have not done the uh, the what whatever the dance part of it. Man, I, I've done the uh, Jedi training and I've done the the Rancor, but that's it. And Michael Jackson, right? No, actually, uh, the only two games I have for the Connect is uh, Star, Wars. Star Wars Connect and uh, some. Connect Adventures or something like that. I think like it's that. started that campaign to get them to do Dancing with the Stars for Connect 2, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know. Well, uh, uh, something that's a, a cheaper, more accurate, they're claiming, uh, version of Connect. It's, it's for PCs and Macs. It's called Leap Motion. Or it's from Leap Motion, I'm sorry. It's this little, little device. And as you see, if you're on the video version here... Um, it seems to mix the the motion of Connect with uh, the gestures of iPhone. Hmm. Because you, you, you and I don't know if you can see this on uh, on the Skype feed there, uh, guys. Uh, but you're seeing like pinch and zoom happening here. Uh, you're seeing they're playing Fruit Ninja on here. Um, if it works as advertised, that could be pretty tremendous. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the big point that people are making about this, and the point that I've tried to make a few times when everybody's like, oh, the Connect, it's great, it's awesome. The Connect is a piece of crap, is the is. thing. <laughs> like, it's a very cool hack, but if you know what, like, the tech that goes into the Connect, it is really, like, legitimately a, a very cheap piece of hardware. The webcam in the Connect is 640 by 480. Remember back in the day, like, eight years ago, and that was the webcam that you would buy? Mm-hmm. So the resolution <clears throat> is innately extremely low. There's like very little information about what the uh, the leap motion of disappearing off. There you are. My camera. There you are. There, there, there I am. There you are, daring fireball. There I am. Um, the so they're not they're they're keeping all of their tech very close to the vest there. Um, but the CTO of the company um, describes it as um, a number of major algorithmic and mathematical problems that had not been solved or were considered unsolvable is what this thing is made of. Um, as you said, it's just a little black box. I, like, knowing what I know and building what I build, I couldn't really fathom what they could have that has this level of accuracy. They're talking about a millimeter to millimeter level of accuracy. Um, 
But I do know uh, that they have $14.5 million in venture capital, which is modest for a hardware company with something big like this. Uh, and I also know that I ordered one today um, to play <laughs> with at work. But unfortunately, uh, it's not going to be uh, showing up until December. Wow, so, that's, that's far out there. I, I yeah, know. it is super far out. But now, what's the best way to drive up capital than making something magical and convincing people like me to buy it? Oh, another fan, Phantom Gaming System. Here we go. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like you just funded a, a Kickstarter. Um, yeah, it really, it Kickstarter that Kickstarter. <laughs> but if this thing is real, so you know, I do the interactive thing, device thing. Like that's my bread and butter. And if this is real. The thing that people are always looking for is the minority report interface. And mm -hmm. this is a guaranteed minority report interface. Yeah, and, and it doesn't really show too much of what the device is other than this little box right here. Yeah, it connects via USB. They don't say which USB. They don't give you any tech specs at all. They don't say what kind of sensors, nothing. Uh, there is, supposedly, you can get it sooner if you, if you qualify as a developer. Um, so I... I Apparently not yet, and it's going to be Windows and Mac. Uh, and they said uh, uh, looks like a version for Linux soon as well. So interesting. Yeah, the, uh, the developer preview is the is the one that we'll, you will get in December. That's what that is. Excellent, excellent. Um, and one one last story, and we'll see what the Hangout has to say. I see Frank up there, Fuzzwad. Uh, see if he's got anything. Um, so this is is this the no? This was over the weekend. That's right. SpaceX finally launches. The first is the first the private company. We're space going launch. to space. <laughs> it's fun to say SpaceX too because it sounds like you're saying space sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they launched. They launched uh, over the weekend. Finally, uh, this is an unmanned, I believe, uh, uh, unit that went up. Unit uh, rocket. <laughs> it just doesn't work from here. Um, and uh, they're going to be uh, delivering stuff to the space station they're going to dock with them for a few days and come back uh so so this is it we're there we're we're, we're uh privatizing space and uh bringing on alien world right sure <laughs> but seriously Whatever i mean this is say, something Mike. to get excited about right because <laughs> now we don't have to depend on the government that's uh pulling uh, apparently not terribly excited about space except for what was it john mccain that wanted to go to mars um you know that 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 that's it. No, I'm sorry, uh, New Gingrich. Um, so so stuff's happening, and 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 uh, as I learned on SourceFed, apparently we don't have to ask uh, uh, Russia for help to get to space anymore. Yeah, I mean, yeah. well, like when you're when you were talking about the story about the um, handful of entrepreneurs who are putting together the space mining operation when NASA and the government had to make the decision to essentially like. It's not that a lot of people look at the, the current funding situation of NASA as in the government decided to not fund NASA anymore because uh, it wasn't making enough money and that the, uh, you know, the exploration of outer space is not worthwhile. What they realized is that the amount of money the U.S. government could save by allowing for privatized space exploration is astronomical. Mm. And when you pit, you know, instead of pitting an organization and another organization against each other inside a solitary government or risking the idea of, you know, uh, Russia versus the U.S. all over again, the idea of pitting corporation versus corporation against each other to further evolution, that's what you're looking at, at the, in the current, you know, computer market. And uh, last I checked, Moore's Law is working out pretty well. So... It's really no surprise that uh, privatized space exploration and, and space research is something that is going to become exponentially more frequent and big and huge and ridiculous. Oh, Jay Hova in the chat room is really excited that maybe finally we can put a man on the moon. <laughs> finally. Finally. Yeah, and he'll go up there and he'll blog from there, so we we'll, won't have any refutable evidence uh, going on there. Uh, Chachi, what are your thoughts on space? I'm in space! There you go. Thank you, Chachi. <laughs> uh, and with that, because uh, it can only get better from there, uh, let's take it. Space, 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 we space. Still got, yes, we still got Frank in the uh, in the uh, hangout. How you doing, Frank? I'm in space! Yeah, I'm doing. You're doing? Um, I'm here. So uh, what are your thoughts uh, on any of the stories we've been talking about tonight? 
the whole uh, Verizon working away their um, their unlimited plans. Uh, that's something that I've been following just because that's what I'm on, and mm -hmm. I typically just from uh, Netflix and uh, Spotify, just driving around. I always have something going when I'm driving, including and Netflix, just whatever else. I pulled down about 10 gigs a month, so that's oh, something that I'm kind of keeping my eye close on. <laughs> wow. So. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't hear too many people pulling 10 gigs a, a month unless they're doing something really. <laughs> wow. Um, you're watching the league on the toilet. Yeah, you're watching the league on the Actually, toilet. Like you to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I'm more concerned about your revelation that you're uh, watching Netflix while you're driving around the city. Yeah. That that, kinda, that's where I'm concerned. That kind of scares me. No, I just put on an episode of Archer and just let it play, and it's just good to listen to. <laughs> I did, uh, when I first got Netflix on my phone, I did, uh, coming back for some of the wrestling shows, put on some of those Comedy Central stand-up specials and just kind of plug it in and listen to them. Because, I mean, you don't need the visuals for that, for the most part. Um, excellent. A anything you else? You weren't I watching Carrot Top. I wasn't watching Carrot Top, no, or Gallagher or anything like that. <laughs> Gallagher. Yeah. Um, anything we missed here uh, this week, Frank? Uh, just a little thing in the Android world that's just kind of funny. Um, I'm I'm actually behind a few episodes on Awesome Cast, so I don't know if you talked about the Galaxy S3 at all, but the big S Talk app that they were touting as their new uh, competitor for Siri is almost entirely based on an app called Blingo that's been available for some time that I've already yeah. been using. And it's not going to beat Siri. Nope, it's, it's terrible. I think that, I think Muns just just uh, mentioned this offhandedly with me today. Uh, so so it, it's Blingo so, is a worthless piece of crap. Okay, I, I <laughs> yep, had it for said. I had it for fifteen minutes. I uninstalled it because I didn't even want it taking up space on my phone. Okay, okay. So we don't think there's any improvements because I mean Siri seems kind of improved since. Apple bought them and redid them for the most part. I know they're technically beta, but they're kind of working new stuff in there. Um, and, and there seems to be a little bit more to it. I have fun with Siri. Mm -hmm. I didn't have fun with Lingo. There's no there's no personality to no. this one. No. Mm. Um, excellent. Excellent. Anything else, Frank, before we head out? No, that's all. All right. Uh, any plugs before we get, uh, let you go? Uh, go to insertcointobegin.com. That's a good one. I agree. That's a good one. I like that one. I concur. In <laughs> fact, if you are inclined to go to insertcointobegin.com, stick around after this show and check out Let's Play Alpha version. That's right. That's right. We're starting a new cast because we are insane. No, um, you're insane, and you kept pushing the button. Yeah, this is my fault. This is my fault. All right, Jim Loke, he's in Boston telling people news things. It's wicked awesome. Yes, and, and I'll... I'll you can check out our website at wcvb.com. There goes that unnamed Boston station, but what can you do? <laughs> there you go. There you go. You haven't been hit by any snow drifts lately, right? No, no, no snow drifts. But they still, they're still using that clip on the news, so. <laughs> Tornadoes may be coming. Look out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tremendous. Um, oh, and you, you still running the blog? Me? Yeah. What blog? Didn't you have uh, Burger and Bean Town or something going on? Oh yeah, yeah. I haven't. You know what? I haven't up, up, updated that in a while. But yeah, Bur uh, Burger and Bean Town uh, on Tumblr. Yeah, I, I, I was like, what? Yeah, <laughs> it shows you how long it's been since I've updated that. Well, now you have to. Now we have to hold you to it. Rob yeah, Daily Crater was. It's just life kind of gets in the way of some things sometimes. Yeah. Rob Daily Crater is at robjdlc.com and insert to begin .com. and insert to begin .com. <laughs> Yes. Dick. Yes, I haven't. I haven't quite rolled out my master plan for that website yet. But I yes, I can't wait to see. I hope it's I, one. one I, I just think. I just hope it's things going into other things, <laughs> <laughs> like not not sexual or anything, just random items going into other random items. That way, people are on Google and they're like, uh, "Let's find some porn." Oh, what's that? <laughs> Insert to begin dot com, and then yeah. they find like. A, a plug going into a wall socket. <laughs> You're very close. <laughs> very you are, close. You are actually very close to what I have planned for. It. Wow. It, it's, yeah. It was You're just not the, too far. It was just an idea I had. You could also just uh, put a live stream of the Squirrel Hill Tunnel on there, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, no, that would be insert the stop. <laughs> that is. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, I don't, you know, top secret stuff. I'm going to uh, New Orleans next week. Excellent. And then the week after that, I have, uh, what do I have that? I have the MS-150. And then the week after that, I'm actually going to Boston. Excellent. Go say hi to Loke, who's, who's apparently abandoned us on the Skype. I, I think his Skype went or something. So, yeah. uh, so there, uh, there you go. Add Chachi's at insert coin to begin.com. Yes. And we already talked about that stuff. You're yes. good. You're yes. good. Go We're check good. out Unsung, one year edition. You didn't throw in the confetti that I wanted. I couldn't find confetti. Yeah. I found yeah. this tutorial, like, take a piece of confetti and protoscope it and do this kind of stuff. And I'm like, no, I, I got to get this out. <laughs> That's not happening. Uh, I'm over at uh, Sorgatron.com. Check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. Drop us a line at AwesomeCast.com. Contact at AwesomeCast.com for the email. Tweet us at AwesomeCast. Uh, if you get any comments for this, please hashtag it uh, AC102 for the episode. We're also on Google+. Plus. Circle us! We'll circle you! We'll circle you. You can drop in like uh, like Frank here and tell us what, 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 the, what the hell we missed. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, and we do respond. Know. We do respond. Yes, we do. Unlike other people, we, we do, do respond. We do. We do. Conversations with our fans. We like we like conversations. Conversing. <laughs> yes. Uh, so thanks, Pants guys. Optional. <laughs> Pants optional. Thanks to our awesome chat room. Uh, you have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week, and I leave you with an awesome video for Chachi. Oh man. Oh, I love this. <laughs> You know, it, I love the songs they put in it. I just can't bring myself to actually play it yet. I think I might do that tonight after the show. There it goes. <laughs> uh,